All right, so let's look at this example here. So I have a speedboat that slows down at a rate of five meters per second squared. So my acceleration has to be negative. All right, and then it comes to a stop. So is that VI or VF? VF. Okay, the process takes 15 seconds. Okay, what's the displacement of the boat? All right, which formula am I using for this one? Right, kind of the, the opposite of the one we were just using. D equals VFT minus one half AT squared. Most common mistake when using this formula, and I do it all the time, is adding instead of subtracting. Okay, you just get so used to using the other one that you forget that this one you have to subtract. All right, don't have to manipulate for this example because I'm being asked to calculate D, but VF is zero. So what do I do with this? Well, I could cancel it, but I do have to subtract. So should I just leave zero in there? Yeah, because I have to go zero minus something. If I don't do that, then I might not get the, the number I'm looking for, a positive number in this case. Okay, If I just go one half AT squared with A negative, I'm going to get a negative number. And that's going to say that by slowing down, even though this boat was moving forward, its displacement was backwards, Okay, which won't be the right direction. All right, so I'm going to go D equals zero minus one half times negative five times um, 15 seconds, so 15 squared. Okay, so that's going to make sure I get the right vector on my answer. All right, so we'll have uh, zero minus 0.5 times negative five times 15 squared. All right, so uh, we only have two significant figures there, so we're looking at 5.6 times 10 to the two meters forwards. Okay, everybody all right with that? This boat must have been going pretty fast, at least initially. All right, any questions on how that one works? Okay, manipulations for this one, are they essentially the same as the last formula? Okay, they are, okay. The manipulations are gonna be exactly the same as they were in the, in the last one. If I wanna solve, okay, this formula, oh, I should make that D look more like a D. Okay, if I wanna solve for A, I'm gonna add VFT to both sides. So D plus VFT okay, equals um, one half AT squared. Okay, and then um, gonna bring the negative and the t squared over here, the negative one half, sorry, and the t squared over here. Okay, and same for calculating VF, okay, as before, I'm gonna add, okay, so D um, plus, not D equals, D plus one half AT squared, okay, and that's gonna equal VFT, so then I divide both sides by T, and I've got VF. So same same manipulations as it was on the last one. And again, I wouldn't ask you to solve for T unless VF was zero. Okay, try those two. They use that formula. Okay, let's look at number one here. All right, has anyone ever seen what a aircraft looks like when it lands on an aircraft carrier? Okay, like the plane comes down and it catches these cables that are strung across the deck. Okay, they have a little trailing hook that catches these cables and essentially just jerks them to a stop very rapidly. Okay, in the same way that um, cables are used to fire them off the aircraft carrier when they launch. Have you ever seen that process? Okay, um, it's got to be pretty violent if you're inside the plane, both landing and taking off. Okay, so there's a massive acceleration experience here. All right, so the uh, arresting device on the carrier stops a plane. So what's VF? Zero, okay, so we know that VF is zero in that question, okay? And it does so in a displacement of 150 meters and with an acceleration of 15 meters per second. Sorry, acceleration is 15, negative 15 meters per second squared. All right, we're looking for the time. All right, so this is that one situation where I said you might be asked to solve for time, okay, if VF was zero. All right, so I'm going to take this out. I'm going to leave the negative there. 
Okay, I'm just going to leave the negative there. I'm going to take that out because T was, or VF, sorry, was zero, and anything times zero is zero. All right. Now, solving for T, I need to take the negative one half and A over to the other side by dividing them. All right. And then what do I have to do? Because that solves for T squared. I want T. So I need to square root. All right, so there's my formula, okay? Solving for T now. All right, so it's uh, 150 meters, okay? And that's a positive number, okay? Divided by negative one half times the acceleration, which was also negative, negative 15. That's why that negative coming over is important. If I forget that negative, my calculator is gonna tell me it can't do this because you can't take the square root of a negative number, All right? So if you ever get your calculator staying that, you probably forgot to bring a negative over somewhere. Okay. All right, so when we do that okay, in our calculator, that's going to look like this. So we'll have the square root of okay, um, 150 divided by, and then I've got to put the whole bottom in brackets, negative 0.5 times negative 15 in brackets, in brackets. All right, so that should take 4.5 seconds, right, according to our math there. Okay, questions on number one? All right, how many people have done number two? All right, let me give you a few minutes on number two. Then. All right, let's look at number two here. So uh, the 68 Corvette took 6.2 seconds to accelerate to 160 kilometers per hour. Incidentally, that's 100 miles an hour. Okay, so that's like fast. Okay, to, in six, most, most vehicles can't get to 60 miles an hour in 6.2 seconds. So, okay, this was an impressive feat, okay? Um, certainly back in 1968. Of course, in 68, they built like giant motors and everything because gas wasn't a problem, okay? All right, um, so we're going from 160 kilometers per hour uh, north, okay? It traveled 220 meters in that time. We're looking for its acceleration. All right, so here's what we know. We know that VF, was 160 kilometers per hour, but I need that in meters per second. So I've got to divide it by 3.6 first. Oops. So 160 divided by 3.6, right? Gives me 44.4 repeating meters per second. That took 6.2 seconds and uh, it traveled 220 meters. Everything's north, so I'm not writing directions on here because everything is the same direction. Okay, we're looking for the acceleration. So I've got D equals VF times T plus one half AT squared, and I'm looking for A. So the first thing I should do is move VFT over to this side. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract VFT over to this side. Sorry, subtract. See, I told you I did that. Told you earlier, I always forget and I always do that one wrong. Okay, now I'm gonna subtract VFT over to this side because according to this, VFT is positive, okay? This is negative over here, okay? But this part's still positive. So I'm gonna go D minus VF times T, all right? That's gonna equal negative one half AT squared. Everybody all right with that? Okay, I wanna get A by itself. So I'm gonna divide negative one half of T squared over to this side, okay, and that'll leave me with A. So now I start plugging in my numbers. Uh, D was 220 meters minus uh, VF, which was 44.4 times T, which was uh, 6.2. And I'm gonna divide that by negative one half times uh, 6.2 squared. Okay, so I'm gonna have more than likely a negative number on top, negative number on the bottom, okay, which should mean that I get a positive acceleration, hopefully. All right, so we're getting an acceleration there of 2.89 meters, actually we only have two significant figures, so 2.9 meters per second squared. Okay. 
north because they did tell us north in the question. Okay. Everybody all right with that one? All right. So there's a bit of algebra, certainly, to do with, with these formulas, um, but we do have to get used to that because when we get to projectile motion, we're going to have vectors and algebra all together in one neat little package. Okay. All right.